Number 18 then, the last question, the 2019 Advanced Higher Maths Complex Numbers. Specifically, the whole question, the whole 10 marks, is about finding the roots of a complex number, the third roots. How does it start off? You're showing this complex number on an Argan diagram. There's the components there. And you have to express it in two ways for four marks. First of all, in Cartesian form, that's the rectangular form. And secondly, in polar form, that's the angles and lengths. Well, immediately oh, you've got it in Cartesian form because you've got the components. The real part is A. The imaginary part is negative root 3A. So that times I. Polar form. Well, in that case, you need the modulus and the angle. Now, that just comes from simple trigonometry. In fact, in this case, I know there's going to be three marks for this, but you can read it straight off. That's a 1, 2, root 3 triangle. So that length, that modulus, is 2A, and you know that angle is 60 degrees. But the convention is, generally, but it's not absolute, that you use radians. So that's going to be negative, because it's going down, pi upon 3. So I could write it out in one go. I don't know if I'd get the marks if I just wrote it in one go. Maybe they want you to go through the whole process. So what is the modulus then? I'll have to square these components, even though I know what the answer is. So that comes to 4a squared. So the modulus is going to be 2a. Remember, that's positive. And the argument of w is going to be inverse tan of negative root 3 over a, which you know is negative pi upon 3. Putting it together, w equals 2a, and then it's just the usual form, cos of negative pi upon 3 plus i sine, just lots of repetition when you write this out, negative pi upon 3. Now that could do as an answer. Really though, you should simplify the two trig terms there because the cos of a negative angle is equal just to the cos of the angle. I don't know whether they'll be wanting you to do this or not. And the sine of a negative angle is the negative of the sine of the angle. But it may well be that you'll get the three marks at this stage. So I'm guessing there's a mark for getting that part, a mark for that, a mark for putting it together. And of course a mark for just reading it off of the diagram. Now, part B, it said the complex number Z is a root of Z cubed equals this complex number you've already got. It's telling you also that A is going to be 4, so that means that those A's have gone and now you've just got numbers. And it also suggests that the first root should be written in this form. Well, for four marks, use Demoltras to obtain the values of K and M when it's written in this form. Well... Yes, you put a final result down like this, but you would stick with this result here with the positive in the middle that shows the arguments quite clearly if you're going to be doing anything like finding roots and powers. So if z cubed is equal to w and a is equal to 4, that means z cubed is equal to 8 times. And I'll go back to this. Plus i sine. It's only for a final answer. I'm going to simplify that to either a plus or a minus in the middle. So that's that part there. Now, Demovs would just be get rid of the cube, so it's the cube root of this side, so it's the cube root of that number, the cube root of 8 is 2, and then the cube root of this. I'm going to leave that outside just now because it will take some tampering with now because I'm not just going to divide it by 3 to make a 9 underneath because that would only give me this first one, but then that's what they've got. The De Moivre theorem is that if you've got a power here, then you multiply the argument by the power. So if it's a fraction, you multiply by a fraction as well. However, as soon as you start dividing, it means that argument can change. Normally, you would just say you've got a certain angle. If you added on 360, if you added on 2 pi, that just takes you back where you are, and there's no point doing that. But there is if you're going to divide, because that will give a different result. So what would happen here is if I'm going to be dividing by 3, then instead of having divide by 3, 
I can throw in a few more complete turns. So that's going to be negative pi upon 3 plus as many turns as I like. And this is where it gets tedious because you just have to write everything out twice. There we you go just now. Negative pi upon 3 plus n lots of 2 pi. See, there's no point writing that in this one because that's always going to go back to that if it's just power 1. But as soon as you do something like power a third, so you're going to be dividing by 3, then you will get different answers. You'll get three different answers. One for zero, the primary one, one for one, and one for two. So now I'm going to write this again. So finally I've got this. Two cos, if it's power a third, it'll be divide everything by three. It'll look a bit messy. You could tidy it up algebraically, I suppose, if you liked. It's that over three, and then unfortunately it's I sign the same again. Simply because you can throw in a few more turns. Because when you divide it, you'll end up just within the first complete turn. Those are the roots for n equals 0, 1 and 2. So for this first one, z1 will be when n equals 0. So you'll have 2 cos, if n is 0, it's just negative pi upon 9. Plus i sine, I'm going to write the space negative pi upon 9. That's just using the 0. So that's the first one here. So that means now I can say what k and m are. k is 2. Strange way to write m, so that m isn't just a 9, because that's not got a negative in it, and they haven't changed this. So it must be the original pi upon 9, so m must be negative 9. Forgot to close that bracket, don't want that tumbling out. Now I'm just going to pop up here for the remaining ones. So what happens with set when n is 1? I think I'm going to put it down this way. So the second root, I'm just going to find this argument to see if I'm to, see if I'm to write all this out again. This argument is going to be negative pi upon 3 plus 2 pi divided by 3. So multiplying everything by 3 there then gives you 6 taken away 1 is 5 pi upon 9. And when n is 2, the argument of z, that was z3, is going to be negative pi upon 3 plus 4 pi this time upon 3. 2 2 is a 4. That's multiplying by 2 at 3. That's 12 to the 1 is 11 pi upon 9. They might let you off with that, but really you should be taking the shortest way around. So 11 pi upon 9 is actually since there's 18 bits altogether, 11 away from 18 is negative 7 pi upon 9. So I can write them out now. So z2 is 2 cos 5 pi upon 9 plus i sine 5 pi upon 9. And z3 is 2 cos. Now, since it's negative, I'm going to put 7 pi upon 9 minus i sine 7 pi upon 9. Those would be the remaining two roots. And if you were to plot them in this, it doesn't ask for this at all, then that first root would simply be this angle divided by 3 and the cube root of that, so it's going to be a lot shorter. So that angle divided by 3 would take you to maybe, let's say it's about there. That would be z1. And then the other ones divide the space equally. They're all going to be 120 degrees off of that. Z1, Z2, Z3. The angle to Z2, that's the 5 pi upon 9. The angle to Z3, that's the negative 7 pi upon 9. But I'm not sure how they'll mark it. They may well just let you write that one as 11 pi upon 9 plus I sine 11 pi upon 9.